Welcome back to In Session, an important day, a powerful day inside the courtroom. The prosecution moving forward, trying to prove that Casey Anthony murdered her two-and-a-half-year-old daughter, Kaylee. Well, today, they took us to the scene, the scene where Kaylee's remains were found. We've got some photos we're going to show you. Um, again, they have been altered slightly, so they're not as graphic as what was shown to this jury and what our own Gene Casares uh, saw. Mike Brooks, Casey Jordan, Sonny Hostin also with us. Let's take a look at that first photo. Uh, Gene, and I want you to describe uh, what we're seeing, what you saw inside the courtroom there. And you know, I, I think the thing that, that I've told you about how that it was just like trash, trash. And I think you can start to see that right there. Those are actually vines, those, those things that are round and look tubular on the right-hand side. Um, they took the photo from various angles but most angles have the black plastic bag to your upper right-hand corner, along with the white cloth bag. Do we know what's circled there? It looks like something is circled, uh, maybe circled by it a witness It would depend or upon what shot it was. If I knew what evidence number it was, I wrote notes for every single evidence picture, so I would be able to tell you. But... Um, let me get some reaction from the from folks who are also seeing it for the first time in its form where it's been altered. Uh, Casey Jordan, go to you first. Uh, as you see this picture that was shown to the jury, it was shown to a jury in a, in a slightly different form, but we, you, you can see where the skull is in the middle. Uh, that's the part that has been uh, altered the most. Uh, what are you seeing when you look at this, Sonny? Uh, uh, Casey, I'm sorry. Casey. Okay, so it's Casey. Casey, here. I'm and, sorry, and Casey. No, I'm really happy to finally be seeing these photos, as as disturbing as it is to finally see them. You know, the criminologist in me, I've seen thousands of photos, been to crime scenes, autopsies, so I really am fascinated by this, and especially by Jean's description, because the the, the more we see, the more we realize that the prosecution's argument, which is going to be that this body has been there since June with all of the vines. We've heard this, but now that we see it and we see all of these vines and all this vegetation and we see how scattered the bones are and how filthy and rotted and disintegrated the clothing is and the bags, how they've clearly been through a flood. They've clearly been blown around in the wind. Uh, and, and again, not to be insensitive or obtuse, but these bones have probably been scattered by animals. This has taken place over months. That's the first thing I see, is the age of this body dump site and how long it would have taken for poor little Kaylee's body to end up in this condition. That, I think, is going to be well, very strong for the prosecution. Let's take a look at the next photo, if we could. Um, and, and Jean, tell us. Uh, what, you're, what we're seeing here. It looks like it, right, there's that, someone maybe picking up the, the skull here. That is the investigator, chief investigator from the medical examiner's office. He has arrived at the scene now. He is there. He is picking up the skull. And it was noted through testimony, uh, actually Jose Baez brought it out, that when he picked it up, there was duct tape attached. There was some vegetation attached. He just sort of picked up the whole thing. Jose Baez also brought out, you see his shoes? On the left-hand side, there's no protective uh, foot covers on his shoes, foot coverings. He just walked with his shoes onto that, what was then a very much a crime scene. But it's the skull, and it appears as though it was the first thing that they removed from that crime scene when they arrived to it uh, on that date in 2008. Mike Brooks, you know what strikes me about this photo, Mike, is how close together this investigator's hands are. It, it shows me that and reminds me that it's just a little two and a half year old girl's skull. Yeah, Vinny, it's just a, just a tiny little skull. And, uh, you know, I, I, I have recovered remains of, of children, of, of adults, and, and it's never easy. You know, you, you kind of, as when you're working a scene like this and you're, and you're, and you're picking up parts and uh, you just kind of compartmentalize it, you look at it uh, very clinically, but you also see here, Vinny, just to the bottom of the picture, you see that black plastic bag, uh, yeah, yes. right there. And then over to the right, you see that Disney bag. Uh, just to the right of that, you see the red and white Disney bag that uh, was being described by the crime scene investigator. And uh, it looks also like the chief investigator, uh, Steve Hansen, has on uh, a Tyvek uh, suit or Tyvek top, almost that blue, with uh, you know, with the gloves. And, uh, yeah, and, of course, Baez, you know, was, uh, was trying to say, well, he didn't have any coverings on his feet. You know, should he have? Would it have done any good uh, at that particular point um, about contaminating the crime scene? But, Vinny, it goes to show when they were talking about uh, when Baez uh, 
you know, was trying to say, well, maybe it was staged uh, or kind of intimated that with what Gene described, looking at the pictures and the totality of, of, of the remains that were there, it doesn't look like it was staged. And think back, Vinny. No. When, uh, think back when the tropical storm came through there. That was August 19th. And then we hear also when Tim Miller came back and it was still underwater. So this looks like the remains that had been underwater for quite some time. Because underwater if, if and someone for months. You're talking about June to December. Exactly, Vinny. And if someone were to go to the trouble of staging this crime scene, you would not see vines intertwined no, all through the bags, crucial. the red, the black bags, and the skull. Crucial. You wouldn't see that, Vinny. Let me show everyone the next photo that, that we have. All right, Gene, this one's a little more obscured, so I'm having a little difficulty picking up exactly uh, what is this, a close-up of the, of the skull? You know, it may be, but it, it is a little more difficult to see a lot of distinction. You know, I want to tell everybody, do you know what else was found right there, very close to the remains? An empty beer bottle. That was found close to these remains. Uh, the... The black plastic bag, which I'm not sure we see in this photo or not, we're going to learn that there's two black plastic trash bags, not just one. But uh, the jury now knows there was just a black tra plastic trash bag. But you see what I'm saying, Vinny, how everything was just crumpled up. Crumpled up? It, it, doesn't, look, it doesn't look staged. It's like you have growth no. over that may be the key and to know, this whole thing. you know the one thing, Vinny, in this photo right here, yes. you see right on the bottom where it's sort of a brownish rust color? Yes. That's what the blanket looked like. That's what we saw so, the crime scene technician describe as a blank. Let's take a look at the last photo that we have. This is a, a much wider shot with a, with a lot of arrows, and I guess there we see the log, Gene. This is a perfect example, Vinny, of what I've been trying to describe, uh, that, that words just cannot um, display what you're seeing here. You can't decipher what it is unless you are told what it is. And farthest to your right on your screen, that blue arrow that is farthest to the right would be the white canvas laundry bag. And it's all scrumpled up. And that second arrow, um, you know, going left to right, that second arrow where you have the pixelated part of the picture, would that be where the, the uh, Kaylee skull would be? Yes, yes. That Sonny is Hostin, good. these pictures, uh, even in this altered state, absolutely powerful. Um, makes this case so much more real, but is full of evidence. No question about it. I mean, I think it's a very sobering moment at any trial for everyone involved when you have a victim that you've seen pictures of alive and well and smiling and happy, and then you see what happened to them, what their body looks like now. And, you know, as everyone's mentioned, I mean, we've all seen a lot of these. You know, Casey, Casey Jordan's probably seen, you know, thousands. I haven't seen that many. But um, I, I think that for these jurors, this is probably the first time they've seen this type of thing. And I think what's Anything especially like sobering, it. exactly, what's especially sobering is we're talking about a child. So the remains are small. And I think that, in and of itself, is going to be really shocking for this jury. And um, but, but, but let me say this, Finney. I think that because of the condition of the remains, because it's so wet, because there's so much vegetation, while I think one can intimate that they've been there for a long time, I think it's also plausible that animals have moved around the duct tape, that perhaps the duct tape wasn't wrapped around her skull, perhaps the duct tape was that placed can, that can on go the either bag. Way. Absolutely. It can go either Absolutely. way. So I wonder what the defense is going to do with that, Vinny, because I have a reasonable doubt as to how the remains were initially placed there, if they were even placed at this location because we know what happens to, to remains when they're in a park or in a forest. All right, let's do this, folks. I'm, I'm seeing people starting to uh, move around inside the courtroom. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, live testimony should be resuming inside the courtroom. You're watching In Session, your front row seat to justice.